Welcome to our regular six minute strategy from me, Guy Munson. Following on from my last video on artificial intelligence, a number of viewers have asked whether the extraordinary tight leadership in US equity markets today shows signs of a wider investment bubble. Last month, for example, we saw just 10 stocks account for more than 100% of the rise in the S&P 500 this year. The other 490 were on average down. Valuations are worrying too. The US technology sector PE multiple is 37 today, compared to a 10-year average of 28. Bubble-like behaviour has been evident in other areas of the market as well. Fang stocks, crypto, ARK, Cathy Woods' fintech ETF, and arguably the price of luxury goods stocks and even football clubs. This sort of behaviour is typical in the aftermath of a massive liquidity surge, as we saw in the Covid years. But today, though, liquidity is actually being drained from the global economy in one of the most rapid and synchronised rises in interest rates in 50 years, while central banks are unwinding their bloated balance sheets. Put together, these all leave us on bubble watch across our portfolios, and we'll see what this means for your investments in the slides ahead. So let's look again at the chart we showed last week on the extraordinary construction of US equity market returns for the year to date. For a sterling investor, that dark blue line in the NASDAQ is up 22% as tech stocks surge, the S&P 500 up 7%. But the S&P 500 equally weighted, that's where you count each stock equally and don't reflect the huge market capitalization of the technology names, the result is you actually lost money. How is this possible? Well, on the right, you can see the breakdown of that S&P rally. Those gold bars are the largest 10 stocks. The blue bars are the remaining 490. And you can see that those gold bars dominated. In fact, in periods accounting for more than 100% of total return. In all those 10 large cap stocks, the returns were dominated by seven, the magnificent seven, so-called. Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, Invisia, Alphabet, Amazon, and Meta. Now, as we talked about last week, this isn't all a bubble. AI is a remarkable innovation. But let's see what we describe as a bubble, and I've used here our friend ChatGPT to give us an answer. During a bubble, market sentiment becomes overwhelmingly positive, leading to a self-perpetuating cycle of rising prices and increasing investor demand. Now, it's not all bubble conditions. ChatGPT is extraordinary, as we discussed. Look below there, I've shown the time taken for the application to rate, reach 1 million users. ChatGPT took five days. The next fastest Instagram took two and a half months. If you look say, at uh, the subscribers to Netflix, it took three and a half years. So this is remarkable. But it is pushing up valuations somewhat worryingly high. On the right-hand panel there, I've showed the US technology PE ratio at 38, almost back to its post-COVID peaks against an average of 28.5. Now, bubbles are a part of investing life, and on the next slide, I've shown you the big bubbles of the last 50 years. The rising gold back in the 1980s, the Japanese equity bubble, the Asian equity bubble ending in the Asian financial crisis, the surge in internet stocks in 1999-2000, the rally in Chinese equities in the mid-2000s, biotech, and then most recently, in the back of huge amounts of COVID liquidity, four separate bubbles, Bitcoin, Fang stocks, AI, and ARK, Cathy Wood's FinTech ETF. And what you can see here is these bubbles tend to occur when interest rates fall sharply and liquidity props up asset prices around a single bubble theme. So what are the risks today? Well, the first risk is clear. Central banks are tightening aggressively and drawing liquidity out of the system. On the left-hand panel, I put those rate rises in for US Fed funds, the UK base rate, and the euro area deposit rate. Some of the tightest and most rapid increases in interest rates almost ever seen. If you take an extreme example here in the UK and look back to 1700, uh, more than 300 years of data, you can see that what we've done in the last few months, indeed the last 18 months, is to lift rates from close to zero, the lowest ever seen over that period, and bring them up to the average in just one and a half years. So you can see the intensity of the tightening cycle. Now, as well as in raising interest rates, of course, central banks are running off their own balance sheets, or at least beginning to do so, as QE turns to QT. And we've seen this quite regularly. In the left-hand panel, you can see that change in the flow of central bank assets. 
On the right-hand panel, I've put the central bank balance sheets in total, that's the blue line, against the world equity index, the red line. And you can see the fit is alarmingly good. More liquidity, higher markets, less liquidity, lower markets. So looking at the markets today, how can we protect against these bubbles? Well, we can do typical things like taking profits early, beginning to run down some positions. But there are three very distinctive strategies here at Saracen. One with a low volatility, it's relatively cheap for us to put in place portfolio insurance. We're doing that across our balance portfolios. Two, a real defence against bubbles is dividends. After all, if a bubble deflates, it's nice to continue to receive a premium income, which pays you for holding on. So I've shown here global dividend growth, round about 7.5-8%, uh, that's the broad average of the last uh, 20 years. So attractive to buy income stocks. Third and finally, what we call a multi-theme approach. So under our five master themes, digitalization, automation, aging, evolving consumption and climate change, we had a raft of sub-themes. And under automation, you can see there, the AI is just one of those single themes. So to be a long-term thematic investor, yes, you need to follow the fast, of fast leading trends, but also you need to diversify across your portfolio. So I hope that's been helpful. I hope it's received, raised a few alarms for the bubbles that might be appearing in markets and given you some tools to diversify your risk, if I'm right, in the months and years ahead. Thank you.